we had the chance in this last uh, musical set to uh, kind of go out on the floor ourselves, and while we didn't quite get a chance to dance, we did at least uh, taste some of the atmosphere, and uh, I don't want to uh, compare one ball to the other too much, but right now, this still is the center of the party, um, and I think it will be until we have the toast to the past, uh, at which point then that's about 10 30 or so in the grand march to come up here at 10 at which point this room will probably clear very quickly and that room will fill up very quickly um, so we're going to be going back downstairs or getting ready to start up some more music we're going to go down there for another uh, song or two watch the uh, the party continue and then we're going to be talking about some very special party favors that are in the basement yes well coming up next we'll be having a foxtrot downstairs too uh, i might inject interject here that uh, during the polka section, when it came to the time that the beer barrel polka was announced, Governor Millett, alias uh, Dr. David Miller from Spearfish, said he thought it was prohibition, and with, at, at which time everyone had a big roar, and then everybody danced the beer barrel polka. It was really, it was really cute. We'll go back down there and take a look and see what's going on. Let's take a look at it while we're waiting for the band to start up again. Can we do that? Sure, we can. for this evening. We'll also be having another beautiful waltz set, the Missouri Waltz, Blue Eyes Waltz, and My Wild Irish Rose. Say, did anybody ask you to bring out your accordion when they did the beer barrel polka? No, George Novak came closest to that in one of our interviews. Uh, he's here, of course. I had it within arm's reach, within striking distance. Uh, so be warned of that, I guess. I think the band's going.
just part of the historical ambiance of the evening. Down on the first floor of the Capitol building are displays of some historic artifacts. In fact, Mark Halverson is the co-curator of the collections for the South Dakota Historical Society. And we'll talk a little bit about some uh, very rare, beautiful, exotic party favors. <laughs> or party equipment, not so much later. What we've got downstairs is the state silver set. Yes, the Navy commissioned the USS South Dakota in 1904 and until 1920 with the USS South Dakota. In 1933, the Navy returned to the state of South Dakota, the silver service from that vessel. And, as you can see, we just had it restored. It is a centennial project for the State Historical Society, and beginning Wednesday, the 8th of November, it will be on permanent display in the Cultural Heritage Center. Uh, now the work was commissioned uh, through a, uh, uh, a smith here in Pier. Yes, a contract out east. Yes, a jeweler in Pierre was awarded the uh, contract, and he contacted Gorham Silver Company in Providence, Rhode Island. And Gorham Silver did the restoration last year. They had their senior silversmith work on it. Basically, he spent six months doing just that work. That was your centennial project. Right? That was our centennial project. A nice one. Now, what we're seeing here, uh, it, it, the detail is lost really on the video here. Uh, each of those uh, cups and the punch bowl itself have scenes of South Dakota. And I swear when I looked at that material earlier today, that Peter Norbeck is hunting on that second cup from the left. It was Peter Norbeck with a pheasant rising from the field, isn't it? It could very well be. That's, we have a hard rock mining scene, we have a hunting scene with a beautiful dog, and the punch bowl has a farming scene on one side and a ranch scene on the other. The um, serving platter has the uh, picture of the armored crews of South Dakota, and each of the candelabra, you have fields of the Navy, the USS South Dakota, and an artesian well. South Dakota is noted for its artesian wells. And this is all lined with gold. Yes. And the still example on the punch bowl on the restoration took one ounce of gold on the interior. Okay, well that all sounds like it makes perfect sense to me. Uh, this was commissioned for $5,000 in 1903. Mm -hmm. um, is there a rough guess at what an appraisal, I guess, an appraisal of the, yeah. of the treasure that South Dakota holds? It is irreplaceable as an artifact. Sure. Um, Gorham Silver, in our conversations with them, have basically indicated, since it would require their senior silversmiths to spend almost two years, they would want $250,000 as earnest money before they'd even talk to us. Yeah. So we have a treasure. Okay. And there it is, and it's beautiful. And there are guards around it. And you'll be able to see that beginning Wednesday, Wednesday. at the Cultural Heritage Center right here in Pier, just uh, east of Hilders Gulch. Mark Halverson from the uh, State Historical Society. We appreciate you coming up to visit with us. Thank you so very Thank much. You. Linda? Well, the wall set is just about over. Right now they are going to my wild Irish road. So if you hear strains of that in the background, you'll be able to go ahead and dance in your living rooms as you are listening. The music is beautiful, provided by the University of South Dakota Centennial Dance Orchestra here at the Capitol Ball. And of course, still out at the Ramcota is the Centennial Ball. And we'll be going out to them and to see all of the things that are going on later on this evening. Coming up, we will be having a grand march at 10 o'clock Central, 9 Mountain Time, and you'll be able to see all the VIPs that are here at the ball, and they'll be coming down that grand staircase. So why don't we go back and we'll take a peek and listen to the beautiful orchestral music and watch the dancing.
called the Grand March. Introduction of dignitaries. Uh, in the meantime, the band will take a brief pause. set here at the uh, um, Centennial Ball at the Cat Rotunda. The uh, Toast of the Past is coming up yet here, so we'll, uh, we'll be back with that in just a little while. But this affords us an opportunity to slide across town electronically and go over to the Ramcota, where Ginger Thompson and Larry Rohr are standing by with the 147th Army Band, and they're playing at the Centennial Ball over there. I wonder if they've had a dance yet. Do you suppose Ginger and Larry have had a chance to get out on the dance floor? Those two is probably all they're doing is dancing. Could be. Let's, let's find out from them right now. Are you two guys dancing or not? Nelson from Vermilion and his wife Edith. Now, this to show you what a small world this is. I went to high school with Edith. She was a class ahead of me, I might add, and I cover Larry at the legislature. Are you guys having a good time so far? We certainly are. I tell you, one of the highlights of the day was driving up. We drove over the Platte River Bridge and up to Reliance, and Edith got to drive, and we got to see uh, the farms and just some very be beautiful sights in South Dakota. And of course, this is a very beautiful night here. And Edith, what about you? I agree 100%, Larry took everything I was going to say. <laughs> oh, you took the easy way out. I know. The ball is a lot of fun, too. I enjoy looking at all the dresses and the way people are dressed. It's fun. Okay, uh, back to Larry and Ginger. What do you have? And we are joined tonight at the Centennial Hall by Jim and Randy Wagner. And you've had a car dealership in here, I understand, for many years, right? How long? Been here all weekend. Tell me about some of the things you've done. Well, we have.
have uh, attended, well, the parade was a big one, of course, and then we've attended some uh, various things that have been going on. It's been a lot of fun. Everybody's been uh, very having a good time, and everything's been going very, very well. It's very impressive. Okay, well, thank you very much, Judge. Sure. Judge Ruth Meyer, Meyer Henry from Sioux Falls. Back to Larry and Ginger. Marvelous. And some of the music that we're going to be hearing in that, uh, the music is 
very appropriate for the centennial, Miss Liberty and the flag of victory. So music that would be uh, very appropriate from this time. We're looking down again, enjoying everybody dancing down there.
here, the Grand March will be happening very shortly. And adding to the ambiance of this beautiful ball in the Capitol building, the 1st Dakota Infantry Commemorative Squad is helping everyone down the staircase. As uh, we've been watching, perhaps we've been able to just catch a glimpse of them. They are a living history unit, began about two years ago. The uniforms are authentic Civil War regular Army infantry issue. So you'll have to be looking for them because I know they will be a part of this grand march that's coming up. Normally when they are out on the march, they carry rifles that are replicas of the Army issue, 58 caliber muzzle loaders with bayonets, and they must be quite a sight to behold. They participate in historical reenactments of Civil War battles and parades and are here with us tonight to add to the authenticity. Also, uh, earlier we mentioned the peer players are here as attendants for the Capitol Ball at the Rotunda. They are greeting all of the guests back at the doors when they come in from their cars, escorting them into the building, and also serving punch and wine and announcing the arrivals of their guests at the top of the staircase. We'll have more of their announcements, too, as this goes on. And uh, right now we are winding up the Foxtrot set. We heard Moonlight and Roses just a little earlier. Show Me the Way to Go Home is up right now, and uh, then they'll be preparing for the Grand March, which has very special music again of a march in two-step tempo to help keep those couples moving down the staircase. And uh, following that, we'll go back to a nice, quiet waltz step. So sit back or, or dance if you like. If you're a good fox driver, this is a good time to do that too. We're watching live from the Rotunda the Capitol Ball and enjoying this marvelous wrap-up to our marvelous century.
Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable George S. Nicholson, and First Lady Linda Nicholson. Centennial celebration. Let's propose a toast to the past, to those immigrant people who settled our land, to the Native American people who were, who were here before, and with the combination thereof that built a state, to those generations that came after, who with fortitude and wisdom and integrity and vision built a state, and to those unsung heroes of today, all of the members of our individual families who walk the streets and the byways of this great state, who prove every single day that hard work makes dreams come true to the past and to our centennial.
Capitol Journal reported that the state officers would have to practice up a little on their dance qualities if they expected to attend the next inaugural. I think we're all taking a lesson now from everyone out there that's having a good time. The sound of the 147th Army National Guard in the background as we enjoy the dancing and the music and the atmosphere of the finale of the South Dakota Centennial Celebration.